Well, it, no, it's all fructose. Fructose is fructose. So it, you know, it's it's very similar to glucose. It's got the same number of uh, of atoms in it. They're just structured slightly differently. And we know a lot about glucose metabolism because it, you know, it's been studied for you know hundreds of years or hundred years. But our understanding of the metabolism of fructose only actually came definitively described by Luke Tappy, uh, who's a Swiss guy, in 2011. So it's brand new, the information around it. We've sort of had some understanding over the last 30 or 40 years, but my textbooks, which are, well, okay, 40 years old, 35, 40 years old, actually barely scratch the surface of fructose metabolism. And even the current textbooks, which are taught to medical students, barely touch upon it. Fructose is completely and utterly metabolized differently to glucose. And so sugar, the sugar molecule is half glucose, half, half fructose. Whether or not you get that fructose from high fructose corn syrup or you get it from honey or you get it from fruit, it's all exactly the same molecule. Fructose, in summary, is a small amount converted to glycogen, which goes to our restored muscle. The vast majority of it is passed is metabolized in the liver on first pass. So the body doesn't like it getting from the blood, the gut into the bloodstream. It goes from the gut straight to the liver, metabolized very, very quickly. And there's some new work coming out suggesting it may be metabolized slightly differently in a few other structures, but effectively most of it goes straight to the liver, metabolized there. Small amount goes down an aldehyde pathway, which gets converted, which is effectively an alcohol pathway. A small amount is going to get turned into you know, as a glass of red wine, but that is an alcohol pathway. Too much, and that's how we make out alcohol. You, you ferment fruit, and it's the fermentation of the fructose gets converted to the alcohol. Whether or not you have that in a, in a glass of red wine or you have it in your liver doesn't really matter. It's the same pathway. Another portion goes towards uric acid production. There's an enormous amount of work about uric acid. Uric acid is a byproduct of fructose metabolism. It's the thing commonly heard of with gout, but it's a huge cornerstone in the inflammation pathway nitric oxide opens up your blood vessels to control our blood pressure it controls the blood flow to our brain and it controls our immunity uric acid inhibits nitric oxide function so if you have too much fructose you'll produce uric acid uric acid will in fact affect our blood pressure it'll affect our brain blood flow and affects our uh, our um, immune system so a lot of people nowadays have hypertension, high blood pressure. Literally, by dropping their sugar intake, they reduce their blood pressure within days. Literally, so that's the practical side of it. The practical side, cut out your sugar, your blood pressure will come down literally within eight days and you'll need to come off medications or at least think about reducing them. That mechanism is via uric acid. Another pathway that, that fructose travels down is then into the production of fat because the excess is converted to fat, which happens in nature. If you eat fruit as an animal and you gorge upon it, you're doing it to get fat for winter, hibernation. Again, that's it. It's a simple mechanism. In nature, fruit drives behaviour and it will go down that pathway of fat production. Some of that fat production actually then goes down in the end pathway to small dense LDL particles. LDLs are a lipoprotein, how we transport fat and protein in the bloodstream. The current understanding is that the small dense LDL particles, this is not the topic of cholesterol, the small dense LDLs, when they become oxidized and in which then they're the ones which are major, a major association and likely cause of inflammation. So if you can actually cut down your fructose then you cut down your small dense LDL production then they're not there to be oxidized and as a result of that you reduce your inflammation